गुड मॉर्निंग देवेश हाँ जी So shall we start? Yeah. Then just wait. I was thinking I'll I have one minute. So just wait for one minute. One okay. minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hari, you need to stop. 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 You have to mute yourself. So Valiya sir, uh, shall we are starting? Yes, yes, start. Okay. So good morning, friends. Uh, I take this opportunity to welcome you all for this uh, webinar on seismic activity in Champai District, Mizoram, experiences and initiatives. And uh, as you know that uh, we are uh, organizing this uh, program in collaboration with Nebu. And uh, many of us are already aware that uh, Champai District in Mizoram. is facing a lot of activities uh, seismic activities for quite some time and uh, if you see at national level uh, we are uh, passing through definitely a phase when uh, besides corona 
uh, besides this COVID disease. Uh, we are uh, having uh, various cascading disasters uh, are impacting at national level. Uh, the various disasters which have uh, impacted us in recent uh, times, uh, in recent months, include uh, floods in several parts, cyclones uh, on the both coasts, east and west, landslides in various parts uh, of Kerala, Jammu and Kashmir and Maharashtra. Then urban flooding has uh, taken its uh, Withdrawal group, you can understand that that uh, urban flooding is uh, definitely uh, posing a big challenge at national level. Then fires are taking place, and uh, the biggest thing is that earthquakes are happening on a regular basis. So you see that uh, regular occurrence of earthquakes have uh, caused a major major challenge at national level. And uh, as far as uh, Mizoram events are concerned, Mizoram is facing uh, smaller events. Uh, for almost uh, two months or more. And uh, the largest event, uh, the panelist uh, may correct me, we have faced a uh, few days back on August 27th, uh, 5.4 magnitude. And uh, due to these events, uh, various uh, buildings and uh, a lot of scare has been created in the region. And uh, buildings uh, have uh, faced some damages as well, including two churches. And the people are uh, really scared in that uh, region. Government of uh, Mizoram have uh, already taken several initiatives uh, uh, in this direction. So, uh, in this context, we are organizing this uh, webinar to discuss more about this uh, activity uh, in uh, Champai district. And as far as earthquakes are concerned, earthquakes are really the, one of the most uh, destructive natural hazards. They may occur at any time with sudden impact and with no or little warning. And when earthquakes are occurring, they destroy the built environment, including your build, buildings, everything, including your life support system, including your electric network, communication network, your transportation network. Almost everything is impacted by big earthquakes. And earthquakes uh, have the capacity to destroy the entire economy of the nation. So they can destabilize the countries or the regions. As far as seismicity is concerned, uh, Devish Valyasar is going to talk a lot uh, in full presentation on uh, this uh, event uh, about the seismicity in that region, northeast region, special reference to Mizoram. But as far as uh, you, know, you know that uh, earthquakes are happening all over the country, and if you see that uh, in last century, many earthquakes have uh, already taken place uh, in northeast region, the last big one, which uh, resulted in uh, severe damage was in Manipur in 2016 and a lot of damage has already taken place. Professor Koshik uh, has already worked uh, on different aspects of that earthquake, so we will request him to share his experiences on how that earthquake as well. So in this webinar, we are going to discuss uh, uh, seismicity of Northwest India with the special reference to Mizoram. Then, uh, what is happening and uh, what are the field observations of activities in Champai district? Uh, then uh, initiative of uh, taken by state government uh, to reduce the impact of uh, whatever uh, sphere has already been built up uh, by, by these uh, events which are happening in that region. And then uh, Professor H. Koshik is going to give uh, a road ahead uh, how to mitigate the impact of earthquakes in northeast region. Not only in Mizoram, but the entire region is uh, highly vulnerable, highly hazard prone. So a uh, lot of uh, exposure is already there. So he is going to give us the roadmap for uh, mitigating the impact of earthquakes in that region. So this is uh, the brief program for uh, today's uh, thing. So uh, uh, with this uh, brief introduction, as I told, the uh, executive director and ID is supposed to inaugurate this program, but uh, due to certain exigencies and uh, some official uh, business in the office, he is not able to join right now, but he has promised to join towards the end of the webinar. So, uh, let's start directly with the Professor Devesh Valya. Professor Devesh Valya is uh, with NEHU, the Department of Environmental Sciences. And and uh, he is basically MTech uh, in geology and PhD in geological sciences. So he is working in this area for quite some time. He is uh, a valued uh, partner of MIDN for quite some time. And uh, he has contributed a lot in uh, many spheres. And uh, he is uh, one of the 
pioneers who is studying this uh, event in uh, Mizoram for quite some time. And uh, we, we are uh, discussing all these events for uh, quite some time. And these uh, the, uh, men behind to encourage us to take up this uh, webinar to make it uh, public uh, what are the developments in that region. Because many, many people are not aware of what is happening exactly there. So with this brief introduction, I request uh, Professor Devesh Pandya to take over and uh, talk about uh, the seismic uh, risk or seismicity of the region with a special request to Israel. So this is your turn, Professor Pandya. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Share, share the, the content. Yes, please. So uh, you can share your uh, screen. It has that is it is not yet highlighted. No, it's coming on mine. So it should be there. Yeah. yeah, please. Uh, it's coming. No, not yet. Not oh. yet. So Yogita, can you share the give the rights to uh, Professor Devesh Valia to share this screen? Sir, Professor Devesh Valya sir already has the rights. Uh, okay. Share the screen with us, sir. But actually, I, I, am also, I am also not able to see that it is not activated. No, it is not activated on right now. It's, it's on mine, is there? So, Yogita also cannot do. I also cannot do. So, at the top, yeah. there is a bar coming. I'll let it share, we communicate, participate. Yeah, it is not there. Share is not activated. So, Yogita, you have to re uh, reactivate it. Uh, so, let me do it again. All, all participants, yeah, all panelists. Okay. Sir. You are not presenter. Okay. So, that message came, but it is still. Uh... No bar is coming. Uh, bar is not activated. Bar is there, but that point is not activated. No, mine it's a uh, shame. You have to stop sharing, maybe one person can share. No, nobody is sharing. Yeah. So only one person can share, and you have the rights to share. Uh, please. Uh -huh, to me, you are talking. No, it is not activated. I am pressing. I think I can share from here. You can yeah, share. You can, can you stop? Uh, Lalin Puya, can you, can you stop your sharing? I'm not sure anything, sir. Yes, sir. The presenter right is with Devesh Valya, sir, only. Yeah. So okay. he will yeah. be able to share. Uh, so please click on the third icon where you yeah, can. Yeah, it is. Uh, have to it is not. It says, uh, it is not. It is uh, white now. It is uh, gray in color. Should I uh, read? Uh, okay, sir, if you're not able to uh, connect, then please leave log in once more and make sure the panel is again. Yeah. Well. In my case also, somehow it is not activated. So because uh, it uh, the presenter rights will go on as per the schedule. Okay.
After re-login, re also it is not activated. This button. It is supposed to be Please activated. Check now once again. Yes, yes, yes. I'll yes. share. How to know? To the presenter, right? Like it happens like what happened to Sir Paul last time. Okay. It was locked. I, I don't know. You so have to, how to unlock it? Uh, uh, just now I joined again. Just now. Just now. Like in case it happened like this. But how to unlock? To record your computer screen so that you share the content. A long WebEx event to record your. You watch to record. Uh, hello, sir. Something is there. Uh, yes, yes, is... Gora, please tell. Uh, it sir, says did you, uh, this, did, uh, this did message you comes. Yeah. And now it is updated, updated. Just right now, some other program was going on. Achha. Achha. So, uh, you can see the icon of share content. Icon is there. Icon of share is there. And it says, allow WebEx event to record your computer screens. You can share content in the event. What does it so, mean? Allow so, please allow the, the screen recording. Please allow this sharing, recording. Quit now. You can choose quit this screen now or do it later. It is already allowed that way. It is already allowed. It wants me to leave the event and then re-log in again. You are now better, okay. No, it is not coming. So can you please share your PPT so that we can share from no, us? That's better. From that's, better. Uh, that's better. You may mail the PPT to us. We can okay. share from us. No, I'm sending. That's the best. This is through Messenger. This message can no. I'm sharing it to Amir Ji. Amir Ali. Oh. Any other? Address also where I can share. Uh, you can do it uh, amir.undp at gmail.com. Amir.undp? Yes, at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Gone. It has gone there now. Amasa, once you receive the the, uh, the presentation, I will share the presenter rights to you. Okay, sir? Uh, so I'm just waiting. Okay, sir. It has come? Not yet. So uh, in the meantime, I can start. Uh, Please. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for apologies for getting you uh, to 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 getting you to to wait for this program uh, because of some some glitch. Still, uh, it, it says that recording should be stopped. Then only you can share something like that. It is telling to 
to me. Uh, you can continue uh, with your uh, Malia sahab, uh, are you there? Walia sahab, are you there? Uh, Walia sahab, are you there? So, uh, let's move to the uh, next person. Uh, I think uh, there are some issues with uh, Walia sahab. So, Laldin Puya, are you ready? Yes, I am ready, sir. Okay, so you can start uh, your presentation uh, on field observation of activities in Champai district. Okay, thank you. Uh, please Thank go you ahead. So much. Thank you so much for inviting me uh, to give an opportunity to share my experience uh, about the field observations, a lot of uh, seismic activities in some high district. Uh, I'm happy. I'm also happy because I can share a good chance about uh, my experience uh, over here. So thanks to uh, NIDM and Nehru for giving me an opportunity to share. So that's my topic is field observations mm -hmm. on TPs in some high district. First, let me remind you that about the seismicity of Mizoram. In Mizoram, uh, in, during this year, you have failed 21 times according to National Center for Seismology data. So, um, so far here, uh, I put only uh, some data only. 
from 21st June onwards. Yeah, you can see that uh, the table here. Uh, here, this one is uh, the Missouri map prepared by Mirsak, our friends. Here, you can see that uh, this one is ISIL, the state capital of Missouri, and some high district is this eastern border. This, uh, this side is Myanmar side, and next to Champai, uh, towards this uh, uh, western part is Kosovo district, and another one is Sertiu district. Those earthquakes is, uh, was built by these three districts, uh, especially, but today you focus in this Champai district because most of that severe earthquake affects uh, occur here in these regions only. Let me circle it this year. In this region only, so in close view, let us see. Here, and there is uh, two rivers, TP River, sometimes in structurally called TP Fault, uh, this side here. And another one is Trio River. This Trio River is in the uh, Myanmar border. So between this area, from NCS, uh, National Center for Seismology and Data, you can see that uh, here. Most of the seismicity occur in these regions only. So uh, from this data, you can see the difference of depth. Uh, earlier, you believe that uh, the frequent earthquake here in Shanghai district may be earthquake zone, but when you examine this different depth, so that may be due to some thing tectonic causes. So from the field observations, you think you believe that. This uh, seismicity, seismicity is more due to these uh, minor folds and lineaments around here. And you may know that here in uh, this eastern border, uh, from uh, this side is around Champur, this Manipur side. Here there is a fold, fold uh, to the Champur, to the fold, not not east, also west directions. And here you can you may see that there is a mud fold around here. Uh, East, south, uh, east west directions. So uh, there are two big folds, you know, you can say there is major folds, two major folds around here. But in this time, uh, most of these earthquakes occur here along this air. So when you see that the magnitude, so from that ISO side, what you think is that you may also hear, you may feel this uh, frequent earthquake, but you can only feel these two earthquakes. Two, three earthquakes, this 21st June earthquake, 22nd June earthquake, and 17th July earthquake. So 21st June is not uh, affect much about uh, in Zoran so far, no record uh, nearby from nearby uh, epicenter. So 22nd June onwards uh, is very important for Mizoram. What we think is that. So from here, uh, some uh, villagers that when I call them or uh, during a visit, DDK correspondents say that uh, they hear 110, about 110 earthquake set tremors here in, in these regions. So that uh, instrumentation is also important because lack of seismometer around here, uh, that's maybe you may also uh, not know, uh, you cannot hear you cannot know the exact nature of this uh, frequency uh, seismic activity here in some high district. So uh, let us go to uh, our observations. First, uh, let us see about the ground cracks. You observe about 10 ground cracks. So different orientations, but not much different. Different, uh, uh, difference in means of the size and the length only here that's a very small weight in, uh, and here to weight in here you can see that there's a small opening then a very long time and in this village also very long uh, open ground class is observed was observed so you measure about uh, approximately 300 meter like this in, in different or uh, locality this one locality only and uh, you also observe this type of ground cracks in the open forest. So you may see that uh, uh, these situations 
And uh, the one interesting about these ground cracker is more or less the uh, same directions. Mostly uh, the directions is near uh, parallel to nearby stream and or river. So mostly not the south, south southwest directions and some this village is to west directions. So these are important because that um, this may be uh, caused after this a uh, nearby stream or near the enemies that uh, gives the place also close to epicenter too. Here there are two openings in that place also. Uh, you examine and investigate this thoroughly. And you will know that uh, in every earthquake it uh, it happens less light. So uh, at least four magnitude also can induce less light. So according to uh, Kiefer and Roger Gates uh, approach also, he also examined that uh, earthquake induced less light. Uh, that's very similar with those appro uh, approach and database before uh, in the world. Uh, they collect what they collect is. So when you examine, uh, uh, prepare, cooperate, compare with uh, those approach and database is more or less same. Anyway, let us see. Uh, most of these landslides uh, occur along the roadside, uh, cutting slope, and uh, different types of uh, failure is there. Translation of type of cell, cell, uh, failure, mostly sli uh, soil, soil slide and toppling of rocks, rock falls, wet failure are very common here in uh, in Champai district. You report uh, about uh, 10 to 15 and uh, less light, but a small scale. And the important points here yeah, in the effects uh, in about earthquake is building performance. So uh, let us see the different buildings uh, effects. Mostly effects that uh, column structures, which are salt column. And the most common type is this type that uh, the, this one is column and this one is beam and that brick wall and brick wall and column joint failure is very very common and collapse of uh, brick wall and cracks this type of uh, damage are very common in Champai district and here you can see that the damage in uh, uh, shear wall and column wall then this one is the school, and you can see that uh, the vulnerability and risk of the children, the students of this school. Uh, and one is important to know that in this school, also in this recent uh, voting count is held here. So that's very amazing. Then here you can also see that column and uh, brick wall, the cracks over here. And you can see that this. Uh, failures of the structures, column structures, and short columns, bulging, and such type of uh, different types of uh, building, building failures is common. And that remind you, this type of open ground story are mostly affected because that you, you can see that uh, that shaking seismic wave, that uh, due to that shake, uh, seismic wave, these are very, very uh, vulnerable. Uh, uh, with regard to earthquakes. So these are uh, very, uh, uh, when you examine, when you investigate the areas, the village, uh, you, I am along with such an engineer at that, at that, at the at particular place, you spoke to, you speak to the owners, along with the uh, village leaders, you recommend uh, how to repair and what will be the causes of this uh, damage. You explain everything in details at in situ. And another one, where, what you observe is property damage and domestic animal also effect. Here, failing or failing down of uh, goods in the shop and field of domestic uh, animals and damage of television sets. I report about 16 television sets uh, are damaged due to these frequent earthquakes. So uh, very recently, on 27 
27 August 20 this uh, last week only. So you felt three of all oh, three four uh, tumors. The first one got 27 uh, August uh, at the time of around 5:37 p.m. Uh, this one uh, this is the day of the place council and local council election day. So in the Champai district also, uh, that election is also held. Accounting agencies, polling officers, and those who are uh, 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 in the queue of uh, voters also, they panic, they run out from the polling of, uh, of the area. So they are panic because that magnitude is 5.3 and followed by 3.6, 4.1, and 3.7 till 29 August. But again, that from when I uh, go to uh, every village, uh, every little leaders, I call to them, I ask them what about the nature. They say that uh, uh, about 40, 30 to 40 cows are damaged, or are affected, I mean, like this and some brick walls are collapsed like here you can see that and again that brick wall uh, cracks and structural failures and falling down of ceiling and open ground but this is a very long time i, I put only very short one uh, you can imagine uh, the widening of this uh, earthquake develops open ground cracks and most light also uh, observed from uh, uh, 27, 27 August earthquake. And uh, you also examine, you investigate heritage sites because Sampai district is rich in our cultural heritage, Michelle cultural heritage. So let me show two sites. And one is Lian Shiri Lung Lang. Then Sherry is a girl, uh, lady, and sit here to look uh, her boyfriend, Song Fiena, is a hotel here, he, she sit here, and the view, a good view points here, and it's made up by sandstone bedded, jointed bedded. So you examine thoroughly uh, that the rock strength and the rock attitude, and because that there is a uh, cracks over here. Uh, joint spacings, I mean, so you recommend to suggest filling uh, this joint spacing using cement like that. Uh, here you can see another very taste size, a very, very beautiful one. This one is Tasiyama Senolina. Tasiyama is a man, uh, he is Mithun, he used to call over here. This one is uh, 12, about 12 meter high from the ground. So this one is another site, a beautiful site. And another site, there, uh, there is a, a step uh, prepared by uh, our state uh, tourism department. So uh, from here, you can climb over the, uh, and can examine the natures, the natures of the top of this hotel like structure. So here, you know, you imagine that uh, this is a cocktail, but it is impossible for him to, to climb over uh, here because uh, according to these beautiful structures and natures of these uh, rock strata, rock buildings, when you so mind. But anyway, this is a cocktail. It's a very beautiful place. One day, please visit here. And you uh, analyze all that rock strata behaviors, and uh, uh, using kinetic analysis, then you recommend how to strengthening of these beautiful heritage sites. Okay, one important point is that you may see that from the data given you in the uh, previous one in the table, there are fre frequent earthquakes over here, over here in Shanghai district. Uh, so the people also explain uh, report 110, about 110 so far uh, earthquake uh, tumors they felt. So uh, that's why people are very, very panic. Uh, during nighttime, they stay in the outside, in the nearby playground, 
and near their residence building. So they will construct a temporary shelters, mostly constructed by Village Disaster Management Committee, like uh, different different types of shelters are they construct. Every village they construct. Uh, in Sampai district, there are 47 villages. Uh, 30, 30 villages are affected by this uh, recent earthquake. Let me conclude my presentations. 22nd June, earthquakes with subsequent tremors uh, severely affect 30 villages in Sampai district. Uh, around people of six villages hear explosion sound just before jolting. And due to this earthquake, it developed about 10 ground cracks. And directions are mostly southeast, northwest directions. Not northeast, there, northeast, not northeast through south, southwest. West, northwest through east, southeast. And which are nearly parallel to nearby stream and river. And in this uh, last slide, are small slide with different times I already explained. And about 360 buildings, including government buildings, are affected. This government includes a school building, a gun water center, health centers. So uh, some are very minor and some are very severe damage. And a very recent earthquake, 27, uh, 26, uh, 27 of gas earthquake in the uh, effect, 37 buildings from three villages. Uh, and uh, when you uh, investigate the area, you observe that traditional type of some type buildings and engineers, RCC structures are observed less intensity. With uh, uh, the, uh, the part uh, that affect intensity is more are unengineered mostly and open ground story like that and materials they use are not uh, up to the mark. Uh, but luckily no human casualty, well about 40 domestic animals were killed. And you recommend installation of seismometers and to prepare seismic solutions and building regulations, implementations are very, very and most required here in some part district, because all district and city district, you uh, here in ISO only you have building regulation. So uh, I am from the team of uh, geologists and engineers. Uh, uh, joint investigation team. So you have a uh, prepared report, a big report, and uh, as previous I told, uh, uh, you have discussed thoroughly and explained what is the nature of this earthquake and how, how it happens. You explain everything in detail in uh, every village with village leaders like this. And you also explain everything and how to repair like that. You explain everything to the owners at the time, at a particular time, at a particular place. Like then we will submit our report to disaster management minister, Pulasamdiana, mm -hmm. and chief secretary and respective MLA for further actions. So anyway, Mizoram is a beautiful place. Most of the villages settle up the hill. So uh, one day, please visit and enjoy the beauty and nature, the beauty of this beautiful nature of South Nigeria. Thank you. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lalit. It's a wonderful presentation. You had uh, taken us to the, the field and uh, shown uh, some pictures in damage pattern cracks in the ground and all these things so thank you so much and i will raise a few questions towards the end so professor devesh Walia, are you ready uh, professor Walia? Uh, yeah so are you making presentation or uh, how, how still, shall you propose? Uh, the presentation to I have sent, I am still okay. struggling with my connection. Okay, so let me try uh, to share. But with the, using the mobile I can do. So I am sharing uh, your presentation. Yeah, you can share, I will be speaking on through mobile. So is it shared? Not yet come.
Have you shared? Yeah. Sit here, no? Check care. Check care. By chance, they'll call you. Have to reply. So it's there. there yeah now we can see something yeah now i can see a little bit yeah it's okay whenever anything is there you have to tell me and you brought this pen drive now you put it open this so, there. can you see the screen now yeah yeah now i can see now i can move ahead okay, okay all right please go ahead. so uh, uh dear it's uh, now, basically, we have heard uh, Poo Lalzan Puya, who has uh, done a lot of uh, uh, RBS screening and and uh, such uh, such work in the in the area which is of concern. Uh, so basically, we know that uh, this is the area where convergence is going on, and especially in the eastern margin. So we need to be a little cautious. We need to be studying it in more detail. Yeah, go to the next. Uh, so basically understanding the whatever is the tectonic activity is very very important you can understand that if we'll we preempt any of the damages any of the activity at least it will uh, it will help in reducing the damage that's what is the important aspect is there because these uh, uh, tectonic activities they pose uh, real threat to the civilization and to the development in the in the region next uh, basically, northeastern part especially is very, very prone to earthquakes and it is very, very prone to earthquake hazard especially. And it is one of the highest rates in, in the world. And basically, uh, you can understand that normally we talk of the earthquakes in the, in the, in the north-south convergence zone, but east-west convergence zone is equally important. Next. Uh, and there have been a lot many earthquakes in this zone. You can see that in India, Whatever earthquakes occurs, out of them, around 50% of the earthquakes, they occur in this zone because we know that this is the zone of convergence and convergence is taking place not only in the north, in the north-south direction, but also in the east-west direction. And because of which, uh, these convergences, uh, the, uh, the earthquakes, they, they, they keep coming in this region. Just tell me, uh, go to the next, please. Next, yeah. On the basis of occurrence of earthquakes, there are uh, there are not many uh, uh, such UNDP and other organizations. They are working, and they have located some important uh, 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 because of the zone of convergence. They have located some important uh, zone of shortening. You can understand that. See, when the Himalayas they get shortened, then uh, whole of the Himalayas they have given rise to a whole of the Himalayas they have arisen after 50 million years uh, of age or so and uh, it has got it is demarcated at the boundary by by the main boundary thrust central crystalline thrust and some of the thrust are there thrust means when one plate goes beneath the other plate so similar those thrust have been studied in great detail because it passed over a long very long distance and it is the people they are living in that zone whereas the similar zones are existing in the in the eastern part uh, towards mizoram manipur and these regions also but the the density of the studied so you can understand that we have got similar zones which are there and even we have got a zone of volcanics which is there yes next slide please so the geological survey of india has carried out detailed geological work you can see that when you go further east from Aizol, then there are uh, there is a zone where Oligocene rocks are there, which are the basement rocks which are present there, which are present there. Uh, uh, these basement rocks and uh, and and these rocks uh, are of importance because these are formed under the flesh 
and the and the molles molles uh, sedimentary facies actually these rocks they are as i was telling you that under the deltaic zone so they are the intercalation of argillaceous and the arenaceous material yeah next please uh not only these the zone which is in india is of uh, uh, seismically important but the zone which is further east of india in the in burmese region also is very very important and there have been so many of the earthquakes occurring have been occurring in that region you can see that uh, from the burmese geological science uh, sciences they have plotted this map and they have shown even up to the shillong plateau but the important thing is that the important structures they are having the meridional trend means north south trend and they are converging towards the west so this is indicative of that the the western part is going beneath the eastern part of the plate that's what is of importance that because they are the convergence indicates the arcuate shape indicates and the the convex shape which is towards the west it indicates that the indian part is going beneath the the Uh, the Burmese plate. Yeah, we can come to the next. Uh, similarly, there have been uh, the plotting of the material of the rocks. You can see that if we go further east from Mizoram area, then we can see some of the rocks which are the basement rocks. So we can understand that the basement rocks are exposed further east. But whatever material is generated in the in the recent times, in the tertiary times, that material. gets accumulated gets stopped when the movement of the indian plate is towards it is beneath the 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 burmese plate then it gets accumulated and that's what where the the tectonic activities they are uh, getting generated we, you can go to the next so uh, we know that this seismicity whatever seismic activities are there they are not haphazard they will not occur anywhere they are major, basically correlated with the major tectonic structures and the lineaments what ku uh, laldin puya has shown that some of the faults they have done even the cracking on the surface of the of the earth such are the indications that those earthquakes are generated due to the faults but those faults or the thrust zones are not coming to the surface but they remain remain beneath the surface of the earth and they have got they are coming out to the surface only through some indications otherwise if earthquake comes like this even of 5 5.3 magnitude it will it may it may bring in the vertical movement of minimum 1 to 2 meters on the surface so if the surface has not gone down by 1 to 2 meters it means these are the hidden earthquakes which are beneath the surface which needs to be understood next needs to be ascertained also so uh, basically once the indian plate is there you can see here uh, the the plate which is uh, riding is the burmese plate and the plate which is It's going beneath or subducting is the Indian plate. So now it is locked. Now because of this locking, as the the plate is putting some forces, so some of the earthquakes are generating. So actually, we don't know precisely that in which phase of this uh, locking we are. So, but we need to be very cautious because otherwise we may be caught unprepared if a major earthquakes more than five five point five magnitude occurs. Yes. Next, please. uh so basically what is happening that major convergence is there in the north south one this is very very important thing which we need to understand that the major convergence is towards the north south because the uh, from the southern side the new crust is been generated so whole of the indian plate is pushing towards the eurasian plate but what happens that as there is not much pressure and as the load of the 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 eurasian plate is very very high because it has already gone too much high so the locking is much more stable so when the plate is pushing uh, further from the southern from the towards the northern side what happens that because the locking is more so now it has taking a turn uh, towards the anti clockwise and that's why this uh, east west convergence is very very important which has started after the closing of the north south convergence and what has what is happening that uh, these structures they are very very complicated structures it, it is giving rise to yes please next uh this convergence you can see that when the indian plate collides with the eurasian plate then it has given rise to the to the higher plateaus of not only of meghalaya or shillong but of the tibetan region also and you can see that uh, those higher plateaus they are towards the southern side or southeastern sides they are just closing down so this is what is 
uh, indicative of the collision of the internal plate yes please go ahead yes and you, we all know that the region is very very active the important thing is that we have got lot many earthquakes in this region and which is which are linked to the crustal flow as i told you that the indian plate is colliding with the eurasian plate as if collides the, on the surface they give rise to the faults and all in the in the solid rocks but the mantle also un undergoes such a collisional tectonics so it flows so when it flows then please go to the next slide then it may give rise to some earthquakes which are shallow focus and such studies using the magneto telluric it has been carried out which says that the crustal flow is going on from the uh, uh, from the from the uh, north west to the southeast part you can see by white lines the crustal flow is there all right and it is by studying up to from 0 to 100 kilometers depth such crustal flows are seen yeah by using the magneto telluric studies yeah go to the next yeah this is what is it is showing the crustal flow this is what is a model which says that the crustal flow is there now the this as per this model the crustal flow is is shown with a yellow color towards the east of mizoram area but actually this area is not yet studied so that's what basically we don't know but we presume because there is a presence of volcanics in this zone so that may be the reason for the crustal flow passing through the myanmar area but this crustal flow may be beneath uh, the indian region or beneath the the manipur and myanmar region near the sagan fault yes please next yeah so to understand as i told you that we we undertook the magnet magneto telluric studies these are the studies using the electromagnetic induction of the earth we know that electro these uh, electromagnetic waves which passes through the earth they get uh, distracted or they get changed because of when they pass through some of the media depending upon the the electric uh, field properties of the media yes please next so yeah so these are the these are the waves which can be used to configure the surface of the earth as i told you that along the indo tibetan region such studies are carried out so we do we have carried out in some parts of mizoram which is marked by red in this uh, figure we can go to the next please and we have carried out the work uh, in in the region where aizol to to champai the area is there so you can understand that uh, we can understand that yeah one one second one second there is uh, some some problem Uh, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, just there is a some uh, some technical problem with the with the, with the connection. So, what has happened that what he was showing our. Uh, uh poor laldin puya so what uh, poor laldin puya was showing so uh, we can we can see that uh, the mat fault is one of the fault which is uh, important fault which is located by the surfacial mapping only am i audible yes hello yeah so they are by a surfacial uh, uh, mapping only but there are lot many uh, uh, other smaller faults in the area which do play important role because in this area uh, the the surface the faults are not coming up to the surface now one important thing is there uh, you can go to the next the the important thing is there that this whole uh, mizoram area is compressed getting compressed from the east west direction so we chose in the direction of the transpose of the indian plate our our uh, uh, sampling sites 
or our uh, uh, data recording sites go to the next yeah so these are the sites which were uh, undertaken for the study these are the 12 12 sites which uh, which have been undertaken from the from one end of the mizoram from the uh, mizoram tripura border rajiv nagar to the other end which is uh, mizoram myanmar border uh, champai so we have carried out the studies so just go to the next yeah. Uh, so this this region because uh, there are lot many lightning uh, activities are there because nearness to the tropics of cancer. But we have carried out the study to a very uh, reasonable good study has been carried out. Yeah, come to the next please. Uh, and uh, at all those twelve sites, we prepared the one day layered model. And uh, those twelve sites, one day model indicates the different structure which is there beneath the surface of the earth up to from one kilometer from three kilometers up to around 60 65 kilometers depth yeah go to the next and this is the actual model which is there so you can understand that from this model that the thickness of the sediments the thickness of the sediments as you are moving towards the east is increasing the thickness of the sediments and second thing is as the thickness of the sediments is increasing the older rocks are also getting exposed as you go towards the east, that's what is the oligo oligocene rocks or the burial rocks which are there. Now these burial rocks have been uh, the site for oil and gas deposits in, uh, in, in, in the northeast. So one important thing is that as the compression is more, so there is a lot of scope of, uh, of these oil and gases to move out. That also may, may be one of the reasons for giving such a seismicity. That's what is very, very important for us to understand. Because as the pressure is more, we can understand that more amount, because these rocks are formed under the flesh faces and the molas faces at the border, means they are the deltaic rocks. As they are the deltaic rocks and uh, arginaceous and arenaceous rocks, there are a lot of pore spaces are there. And the compression from the, from the western side is increasing towards the eastern side. Because of this compression, all these materials may be flowing out and these rocks must be adjusting to it. So that also may be one of the reasons for giving rise to such earthquakes. That's what we need to understand. Yeah, go to the next slide, please. Uh, uh, these Once this compression is there, it shows that there are some resistive features and there are on the surface, there may be a lot many uh, anticlines and synclines or antiforms and synclines may be, synforms may be there. But beneath, there are three, four antiforms and synforms are there. And because of the convergence, uh, what is happening that uh, uh, convergence due to the eastward drift of the Indian plate, it is uh, giving rise to, to even the Arakan Joma suture zone also. And, uh, and these sedimentary layers, they are, they are increasing in the, in the thickness as we move towards the Champai area. Yes, go to the next. So, so with, this, yeah, with this, we can just map them and we can understand that uh, this, in this part of the Indian plate is is working as a wedge and as it is working as a wedge the chances of such earthquakes they are more but only thing is that if uh, it has crossed the critical limit then their chances of occurrence of major earthquakes are also cannot be uh, cannot be avoided they are they are chances are there just go to the next so these blocks are there which are dewatered matter sedimentary rocks and as they are further dewatering the chances of their uh, uh, such destabilizations are becoming more and more. Yes, go to the next, please. In our place, it is raining very, very heavily because of which the connection has gone very, very slow today. So uh, uh, we can see that further east, if you go, there is a presence of a fault zone. And that fault zone is indicative of the Indian plate boundary or Sagyang fault, which is present towards the east. Yes, please. So there have been a lot of studies, even by ONGC, by GSI, and all those people. Uh, uh, ONGC, while studying, they found that the, the thickness, as we move towards the east, the thickness is reducing. Whereas we, through our studies, we have found that the thickness of the uh, rock beds is increasing. So if, if by chance, if what we say that the thickness of the, the sediments is increasing, as we go towards the east, then the probability of 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 those uh, these uh, pore spaces and all getting compressed and uh, releasing of the energy it means less risk is there but if we follow the model given by the by the uh, ongc then it means it is the plate boundary and that plate boundary 
and as the rocks which are beneath are are uh, are, are the are the volcanics or meta sedimentary or are the granite nice or are the amphibolite series uh, uh, rocks then there the chances of the plate boundary interacting and the generating major earthquake is also not uh, inevitable that's why we need to have further studies so that to know the impact and to know that how to control such uh, uh, seismicity in the region there have been some other studies carried out by by the Myanmar group so the last color photo is taken from there which also matches with us which says that there are presence of some faults in the region which may have potential to generate the seismicity in the region yes please next so uh, yeah, this is of the, yeah yeah i'll just conclude i'll conclude this is the last uh, this one we'll not go ahead so uh, just to tell you that this is a uh, this is a zone wherein um, uh, such compressive forces are very very active and we need to take the work in a greater detail so that uh, to 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 match it with the surfacial features and the deeper structure for which the government of mizoram is very very active they are uh, they are they are requesting us also to take up some work and in very uh, shortly we'll be taking up some work to conclude so that to tell that that what are the the factors which have got major impact on the on the seismicity in the region with this i would like to thank to bear with me because there were some technical glitches in the in the presentation thank you very much amir ji so thank you so much sir for a nice presentation uh, it went off well and uh, the only only question coming to my mind is that uh, what are the chances of a big earthquake uh, in mizoram yeah now you can i, I can say now Valia sir, are you there? Uh, Valia sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, sir. So, what what are the chances of a big earthquake in Mizoram or uh, that that part? Chances of big big earthquake, unless we take up some studies. Uh, actually, we'll be we'll be putting our seismometers in the region, and uh, uh, as I told you, that there are two possibilities are there. One is uh, because the rocks are sedimentary rocks in the region and as these sedimentary rocks they are getting compressed if the pore spaces are getting compressed then there is a lot of scope lot of uh, such force these rocks can withstand but if as per ongc if they are the border rocks and they are thin uh, uh, say around 15 20 kilometers thin uh, sedimentary rocks are there which are just overlying the the solid material then the chances of tectonic earthquakes are more and then we need to be taking we need to take some more precaution that's all okay thank you thank you so much for the nice presentation and uh, finally managing <laughs> the show come so, so, on managing it is raining so heavily yeah. outside so yeah. so thank you so much once again so now, now we are going to uh, dr lal bia kima to uh, discuss about uh, the initiative taken by the local government state government on uh, various uh, activities uh, about the system activities are you there, Dr. Piyak? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so you, you can take over and uh, tell us in brief about the, what are the initiatives taken by the state government. Yeah, thank you. Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, my topic is uh, initiative of the government, uh, 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 Mizoram government initiative after the earthquake. Actually, in the wake of that uh, 22nd June earthquake in Mizoram, especially in and around Champai district. The government of Mizoram uh, takes all its effort to comfort and relieve the suffering of the peoples and by sending doctors and other relief package. Among others, geology and uh, mineral resources government of Mizoram. It sends geologists to conduct earthquake studies that That studies include to observe the general effects of the earthquake in that area. Number two is to assess the damage, the damage pattern. And three, to evaluate intensity of the ground motions. And then from that intensity, intensity survey, uh, that says isosismal map is to be prepared. 
And then from that isosceles, uh, for, for this isosceles map, <laughs> GSI SOP is being used. And uh, with that ground truth data collections, that intensity survey was, de uh, was done. We'll see, we'll see some of the slide. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's yeah. It, it, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. For that, uh, for that study, methodology, uh, methodology, uh, methodology for that uh, studies we apply is direct field investigation and interview with the affected people, and at some parts where there cannot be. Uh, where communication system is difficult, telephonic uh, uh, telephonic uh, telephonic discussion is also used for data collections, and then for data collections questionnaire is also prepared as per SOP of GSI, and from that questionnaire, and then will give some some value as part msk 64 scale we prepare next year yeah next next slide Yeah, here is the the area where earthquake was uh, taking place, and then up till now, some slight streamer is also going on. Yeah, here is the main affected area. The earthquake is concentrated in and around this area. Yeah, we have seen it. We did uh, with a date. And time of the earthquake. This is the Champai area, Champai district, and then it includes this. Uh, the the most affected parts are all uh, are in this line. From from this, yeah. From that one, then from the area photograph and imagery also. We delineate, we delineated some lineaments. This is the lineament in and around that Champai area, uh, Kobung area, where earthquake was uh, frequently most. These are the area where most of the earthquake took place. We thought that these are the line where these are the line west southwest direction these are the west southwest west direction and the, this also this also this also apart from that northwest trending lineament a lot of northwest trending lineament, lineament so we uh, we can see it and a major lineament is also there along this Chio river also and this Tupi river From the concentration of that earthquake activity, yeah. we thought that this 
the movement of this linear mint is the main cause of this uh, earthquake. And then, apart from that one, geological map is also prepared. And take, uh, you know that this part, the eastern part of Mizoram, is the oldest liturgical part in Mizoram. These are all these are all barrel formations, and this yellowish part is the oldest one, genome formations, and then another another one is Lysong, and then another one, this one is Rengi formations, and then this lithological contact is also controlled by this lineament. You see, here, a lot of displacement is there in every of the lithology, here in this part also. Because of that, we assume that these lineaments play a major part for earthquake in this area. And from that intensity survey, we prepare isoseismal map. Isoseismal map. And then the highest one is uh, we put it as intensity scale seven. And the lowest one is the intensity scale four. And then these are the highest intensity area. This, this, this one, this one, and this one. And from field observations, we thought that beside the lineaments, the geological formation also play a part for earthquake intensity. You see in this area, we see mostly this genome and Lysong formations. There are, uh, these formations are mainly bedded silty sandstone and shale. They are very com uh, compressed and very dense. Whereas this Zokotar area, it is of loose formations, but intensity is also seven this hard formation is intensity scale is seven and this loose formation is also intensity seven why the reason is that this earthquake seismic wave has gone past these dense formations and when it reaches the loose formations, the, the seismic wave becomes slow, becomes slow down, and disperse. It multiplies, or it amplifies itself. Because of that, in this loose formation of Zopater area, we see a lot of damage from that earthquake. And then, that is our uh, conclusions, but we need more study. As of now, because of this uh, coronavirus, our our Mizoram government is also uh, trying to bring more experts from central government also. But due to this uh, coronavirus, up till now they cannot come. And when the time this uh, crisis time is over will have a better chance for studying by expert. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Biak, uh, for a nice presentation. It's, it's uh, some, some real glimpses uh, of your work uh, there. So, uh, we, we had uh, some information that the state government has uh, taken a lot of initiatives. Uh, you have uh, shown us some glimpses of uh, your efforts by the state government. 
so we we'll discuss uh, towards the end if time is permitted now uh, let's go to uh, our next uh, speaker which is uh, professor himant uh, sadi koshik who is professor and head center for education technology at iit guwahati and uh, professor koshik uh, is basically a structural engineer and uh, he is the best person to take us uh, guide us uh, what what to uh, and how to mitigate the impact of impending earthquake as uh, the professor was mentioning so we have to uh, take take uh, all these things uh, uh, interest of uh, professor koshik into the uh, earthquake damage surveys as well he has been i'm not sure whether uh, he, is, he has been there to mizoram as yet but uh, definitely he has covered uh, many many earthquakes uh, at national and international level so as, as we were discussing in the beginning uh, in the introductory part uh, koshik sir was responsible uh, for doing damage survey in manipur earthquake of 2016 so this uh, in addition to that uh, koshik sir is having uh, a lot of experience of uh, uh, serving uh, at national and international level uh, he is basically uh, has received uh, several honors and awards and medals from various organizations he is a part of the uh, of uh, Indian Standards, uh, see, uh, 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 standards on Arsenal Sectional Committee. Uh, he got uh, some IA, INA Young Associate uh, since 2013. INA Young Engineer Award to Bhutan. In addition to that, as I mentioned, uh, he has done a lot of post-doctoral uh, reconnaissance uh, studies. Uh, after the uh, Nepal earthquake, after Nepal earthquake, two thousand fifteen, then uh, Sikkim earthquake, two thousand eleven. So uh, he is a member of uh, various uh, prestigious uh, professional societies, uh, including the Indian Research Institute, the American Society of Engineers. So uh, there are a lot of things to say about the uh, project, but I am not taking much time. So I request the professor to take over from here. So Koshik sir, this is your turn to guide us to how to mitigate the impact of earthquakes uh, in Mizoram, but the uh, entire Kailas is the northeast India. So uh, you 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 know better than all of us that how to mitigate the impact of impending earthquake in that region. So it's your turn. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramir, for uh, introducing me. Uh, well, I visited uh, Mizoram twice. Uh, last year there was a collapse of bridge near Aizol, so I was invited to uh, study what the reasons why the bridge collapsed. So I went there, and then uh, I visited this year again for a project meeting. Uh, I hope you can see my slides. Yes, yes. Okay, so. I will start with this uh, uh, interesting comparison, which actually shows a very unique nature of risk that the northeastern part of India is uh, witnessing. So on the left side, you see the seismic hazard map of India, where uh, there are four seismic zones. All of us know is prepared by the Bureau of Indian Standards. And uh, on the right side, you see the landslide incidence map of India. The interesting point here is this is perhaps the only region in the country where you have huge landslides as well as the biggest earthquakes India has uh, seen in the history. Now, the, the rare combination of these events actually put this region into a more into, into a further risk. Now, the landslides may be uh, uh, rainfall induced or it may be earthquake induced, but the main point that I am saying here is that. The 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 uh, soil the the strata is such that it is prone to landslides. Now that increases the risk too much. So as I am asked to, I mean, uh, define some ways forward for seismic risk mitigation in northeastern part of India. These are my eight points agenda for doing that. So first is of course. The continuing education, training, and awareness. It's a long term process. I will discuss each of them in slightly more detail in the next slides. The second agenda, as per me, is improving the understanding of local geology and seismic hazard. The third point is improving construction practice. 
which involves the public, the engineers, and the administrators. The fourth point is identifying resilient vernacular housing typologies, which are prevalent in uh, uh, local villages in different regions, districts of uh, Mizoram. Fifth is strengthening the existing infrastructure. Now, this is very interesting because uh, the whole world is actually working in this area, but uh, how we can actually de develop our own methods to strengthen our infrastructure, that is very important. Then, developing strengthening building bylaws is very important for earthquake safety and reducing the risk. Financing projects that can address local problems. So this is uh, what I feel is missing presently somehow. We'll discuss uh, in detail more. Uh, taking clues from existing programs. So there are several programs already existing. So we can actually take a clue, take help from them. The first point is the continuing education, training, and awareness. So this is one of the most important points in seismic risk mitigation in any part. Now, it should be a long-term, continuous, progressive strategy. We should not think that we have already um, trained our engineers, we have already um, uh, underwent so many programs, so there's no need for any more uh, training. But then my point is we have to first generate awareness in the public by creating these public awareness programs on radios in schools and colleges. So the State Disaster Management Authority can actually conduct the regular earthquake drills. I hope it's already been conducted in many parts of Mizoram. If it is not, then this is one very uh, useful way in which we can create awareness. It, such drills can be conducted regularly in every city, village. The, uh, another important point in, in uh, uh, generating the public awareness is by translation of earthquake safety documents in local languages. There are so many documents available in English and in some local uh, languages like Hindi and uh, Marathi, even Assamese. But I'm not sure if some uh, earthquake safety documents are available in these languages. So one such very important document written for normal public, non-engineer, I mean, public users who are not engineers is earthquake tips. So most of us engineers take, take help from these earthquake tips, but then if it is translated, they will help the public also. Then the this is uh, what I was mentioning that every engineer, maybe government or private, they must update their knowledge regularly. In some other countries, they have a minimum, uh, 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 I mean, mandatory program that every engineer has to do in every year. For example, two weeks of program every year or 40 hours or two short term certification courses every year is mandatory for engineers. But somehow in India it is missing. We have certain training programs regularly, but then it's not uh, mandatory. It is also not very really formal in nature. So we can actually uh, reward such engineers who undergo such trainings by publicizing, by increments in their salaries, etc. Third point is also very important that we have to now look for higher studies of uh, the engineers working in government as well as private companies. For example, they can do their masters, their PhDs from IITs. Uh, they can we can have uh, some MOUs with uh, the Mizoram government. Just to give you an example, a very uh, senior engineer of about six years of age just completed PhD from IIT Guwahati. He's working in Arunachal Pradesh. So. 10 years back, he completed his MTech and then he completed his PhD. So, I mean, we have to reward the engineers for such higher studies. The second important point that uh, the other speakers have already highlighted is to improve our understanding of local geology and seismic hazard. So, we need a lot of data in order to improve our understanding. So, we need to instrument, we need a lot of instrumentation in this region. In fact, the instrumentation in the entire country is is very poor, but since this region is uh, subjected to so much of seismic activity, we have to instrument this region. We need to conduct geological field studies as well as simulations so that we can find out the critical locations that have high potential of landslides and we can avoid them. The corrective measures can be adopted if we know such critical locations in advance. We need to carry out plan the geotechnical studies 
to evaluate the soil properties which are very important for seismic safety of structure. What we have observed that our geotechnical understanding of local region is very poor because of many reasons like manpower, the equipment required, instrumentation. So unless we have good understanding of the geotechnical, geotechnical aspect, it's very difficult to uh, uh, understand how structures will behave. Ground improvement techniques can be implemented if we have these properties, uh, if these data available. Then of course, the assessment of, the assessment of seismic hazard, which is uh, again very important to understand the seismicity and for improved seismic hazard maps. If you need to find out the seismic vulnerability and risk, this is what we have to do, assess the seismic hazard. Improving the construction practice with the involvement of all the stakeholders is very important. Activity for seismic risk mitigation. So we need to train the contractors, the masons and the laborers. And who will train them? So the first point that I discussed was training of these engineers. So continuous education of these engineers. So these trained engineers in turn will train the contractors, masons and laborers. And we can reward the best masons, best laborers to create more awareness so that people have some motivation to undergo the training. Ensuring good material quality is, of course, very important for any structural uh, uh, better performance of structures. So we have to mandatorily uh, ask all these site engineers to test the material before any construction. Then we have to look for the local sustainable materials because we can always find some better material developed locally. Just one example is locally available bamboo, which is very sustainable, which can be very easily used in lieu of certain other materials. I will discuss this point later. Then regular checks by the engineers, enforcement of coral provisions, and we have to reward the best construction just to motivate people. Fourth point is identifying resilient local vertical housing types. Some, some years back, NDMA granted a project to several IITs to find out what are the different building typologies in India for their seismic vulnerability assessment? And I'm showing you here two types that were identified in uh, ISO. So first is of course reinforced concrete building, but you can see how irregular that building is, how uh, poorly configured that building is. On the right side is a is a uh, timber house, but then again the configuration is very poor because it has so such long columns. At the bottom, and we cannot simply call them columns. These are some members somehow, uh, I mean, managing the weight of the house. So, a, a similar study was carried out in Assam uh, for Assam type housing. These are the houses which are there for hundreds of years. They have performed really well. So, in 2019, we carried out some study on Assam type housing, and let me show you. What are the features of these houses that we are interested in? So this is a single uh, wall or a single panel or a frame of the Tassam type house. And you can see here that the, the, the framing is timber, but the walling is something else. It is called Ikra panel. And these are bamboo shoots which are woven together and then plastered. Now the beauty of this house is that it has so many flexible joints, like this is joint A at the bottom, left bottom. So the vertical timber is connected to the pedestal using only these steel bones and uh, sorry, using the steel flags. This joint B on the right side and just see the difference between joint A and joint B where the, uh, the, the steel flags are oriented in different manner. And similarly, there are all these joints which are very flexible, which actually imparts flexibility to the structure. So we thought, let us test this structure test each of these joints in our laboratory to know why these buildings are performed in such a, a beautiful way. So each of these joints were tested individually. And then we also tested the entire house, a single uh, room house of awesome type uh, uh, structure. So this is a full scale house tested in the structure engineering laboratory at IIT Guwahati. So this is a dynamic test you can see. Uh, under a real earthquake, how this house performed, and I'm showing you the video now. And if, if you can find out a single crack in the house, I'll be interested in that.
All right, so I, I am sure you did not find any crack there. It was a real ground motion that has peak ground acceleration of 1G at the base. So since we could not fail that house on a shake table under a real ground motion, we thought let us try to fail this house by applying an equivalent load at the top of the house. So this is, a, this is again the same house, but the loading is now quasi static that is applied at the top. You can see the actuator connected at the top of the structure. And I will now show you again this test video, which is a fast forward mode. But just try to see what happens to the vertical alignment of all these timber joints. And at the bottom, you can see the displacement level of uh, displacement level that is applied at the top. So presently, it is uh, 25 mm. And you can see that the people are moving so fast, so it is done in a fast forward manner. Otherwise, the entire test took around three, three and a half hours to complete. So this is, we are at 65 mm, 70 mm displacement at the top. And you can see the only damage that you can see here is at the interface of the timber and the brick wall and the uh, ikra wall. So this is a 110 mm. Now you can see some damage in the ikra panel as well as the timber frame. Now we have reached about 140 mm. So this is 150 mm. That is about six inches of lateral displacement. Now generally earthquakes don't uh, uh, subject the houses to such high displacement at the top. This is only a single story house. But then you can see even at 200 mm lateral displacement, some cracks appear in the ikra panel. The entire frame is separated from the house, but then there is no collapse of the house. Now we have reached about 240 mm, 250 mm. So that is the reason that the, I mean the primary reason that these houses have performed so nicely is their flexible joints. So if we have done it for Assam, we can of course find out similar structures that are there in Mizoram. So if we can improve the local typology for smaller dwellings, because RC buildings are not required for everybody for every structure because they need engineering judgment and supervision at every stage. So we, we our uh, uh, idea is to actually prefer local typologies, local type of structures for single family dwellings to reduce the seismic risk for RC buildings. Now, fifth point is strengthening. So again, we have to actually develop very simple and inexpensive methods to strengthen because there are many expensive methods available. People are there who can actually retrofit your houses, but then they will charge lakhs and lakhs of rupees. So DST again sponsored a study at IIT Guwahati to develop low cost, very inexpensive method of strengthening unreinforced masonry. So I'm again showing you a video of full scale house of a masonry building. And uh, let us see without retrofitting, there's no retrofitting done here. And let us see how it behaves. Now you can see, since it's a masonry building, it is not flexible. So you can see the movement of the people, you can see the movement of the house at the top, but then the total deformation is very less. So now this is the uh, displacement at about 20 mm. And you can see already a lot of cracks in the house because it's only unreinforced. There's no reinforcement there in the house. And you can see the top portion of the house is already separated from the bottom portion. And it only failed at a displacement of about 30-35 mm compared to 250 mm in case of Assam type house. Now let us see another video where we actually use surface mounted steel bands for strengthening. So these steel, the, the brown color bands that you can see on the building, these are steel bands, simple steel bands that are mounted using nuts and bolts over the walls on both the faces. And let us see how this building behaved. Very nice. So this again, you can see we have reached 30 mm, at which the underinforced person will be doing failure. And it is performing really well. You can see failure is falling off the brick building, but it doesn't matter because it is able to actually sustain the loading. And the beauty of this house is before failure of the masonry, there was a failure of the steel flats. 
Okay, so that means the load is transferred to the steel tax. So it is it is the, the method is extremely cost effective, it can be implemented very quickly without much disturbance to the residents and outsiders. It does not require expensive equipment or skilled manpower to install. We can do it ourselves with the help of some labor. It does not increase the seismic mass of the structure, which is very important for seismic design. It does not increase the lateral stiffness. It increases the lateral strength and ductility, and we can very easily replace these steel flats. So we have to develop similar retrofitting solutions for other types of seismically vulnerable structures in Mizoram, let us say. It is quite possible to develop local, uh, this, I, I'll call this system as a locally developed uh, strengthening system. Then we have to strengthen or develop the uh, building bylaws because it is very important to enforce these bylaws for reducing the seismic risk. We have to integrate them with the seismic, with the Indian standards. Again, I'm saying the local problems must be addressed because the, uh, the, the seismic codes are, are designed in New Delhi. I mean, of course, people are there from all parts of India, but then the, the local problems faced by Mizoram should be there in the local bylaws. And then we have to uh, be very, uh, I mean, very uh, careful in land use planning. We have to include different hill building configurations in such documents and certain uh, uh, clauses and bylaws which are not there, we have to develop. For example, design and construction of guidelines for local building types, foundation detailing in hilly terrain, step construction practice, the retrofitting of buildings on hills. So all these is required to be developed. The local government should finance small projects that should address the local problems. For example, how to improve the structural performance on hill slopes, how to find out sustainable materials for such construction on hill slopes. The slope stability analysis, the landslides encountered in Mizoram should be addressed by uh, financing certain projects to universities to institutes. The non-structural issues, the suitability of different building typologies, which are already there. So just to give you an example, Tripura uh, uh, government actually gave in, in, in the uh, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, gave us a project to study Tripura bamboo housing. And we are actually studying it presently. And then Assam government gave us a project to find out retrofitting solutions for open ground story buildings in Guwahati. So we are involved in many such local projects, but then the number of such projects are very less. We have to somehow improve them. So this is one example of the earthquake resistance of bamboo houses, the project given to us. So here in the project, a very uh, indigenous technique was developed to treat the bamboo before we can use it in construction. And uh, in the project, we are developing different types of joints so that they remain functional during earthquakes and we'll construct these houses and the final idea is to test these houses like we did for Assam Tech Forum and then develop the guidelines. The last point is taking clues from existing programs. For example, this National Seismic Risk Mitigation Program, NSRMP, is, is a program that, that, that considers presently nine states. So out of uh, these nine, four are from the northeastern region. So Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, and Tripura, they are there, but somehow Mizoram was missed. And I, I hope Mizoram should be a part of that exercise with the help of the State Disaster Management Authority. The proposed activities of NSR MP is very similar to what uh, uh, is actually required to reduce the seismic risk, basically to strengthen risk capabilities, risk assessment capabilities, Raising public awareness, strengthening of building codes and land use regulations, piloting retrofitting of critical infrastructure, and developing risk financing framework. So, if we can link somehow Mizoram with NSRMP and the remaining states of northeastern country, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, reduce the seismic risk and we can mitigate the seismic risk. But then, like I said in my first slide, it is a long-term solution. It takes it takes time. You should not expect that solution will be there next year or in two years. If we can sustain our efforts for next 10 years, then I'm sure we'll be able to mitigate the seismic risk. So thank you very much. So thank you so much, uh, Kaushik. It's a wonderful presentation highlighting all those uh, essential requirements for risk mitigation in the Northeast region. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, nice to see the experiments you have already carried out in the structural engineering lab for the professional or vernacular types.
So thank you so much for the presentation. So uh, just just one query: uh, Have you carried out some studies uh, on vulnerable housing in Mizoram as well? Because you have covered Assam type and uh, some local uh, construction offices in other states. But uh, what about Mizoram? We have not yet we have not yet carried out because it requires some uh, efforts in the sense that. Although that NDMA study was carried out in 2013 to study some vulnerable housing systems in Mizoram, but then we could not visit local villages at that time because of the time frame. So what we did at that time was just uh, studying the housing systems in Mizoram. So if we can get some good data about what are the local systems, local housing systems in Mizoram, then of course we can plan such a study for that also. Yeah, considering uh, considering the situation in Mizoram. How do you rate the level of vulnerability there? <laughs> I mean, you don't need an answer to that question. It's very high. It's actually very vulnerable. It's actually vulnerable. It's very yeah. high. And primarily because of the terrain. Yeah. Otherwise, the, the construction practice is almost similar in the entire northeastern part. Yeah. So thank you so much, Professor uh, uh, Kaushik. It's a wonderful presentation, and I hope uh, the participants have enjoyed this. At least I enjoyed. your discussion and the presentation it's it's uh, giving the direction so now ball uh, shifted to mizoram team uh, especially lal bhai kima sir uh, are there some things come from professor koshik's uh, presentation to mizoram uh, you have to unmute yourself Pardon, sir. I don't get. I, get, I don't get what you say. No, with the professor actually giving a wide variety of uh, des description for earthquake risk mitigation for the entire region, not only Mizoram. Are there some takeaway or Mizoram from his presentation? <laughs> I don't know, sir. Actually. Okay. <laughs> Uh, because a lot of lot of activities uh, are there which uh, state government has to take uh, uh, the experts like professor koshik into confidence and uh, involve them in studying at least those the uh, traditional rural housing yeah. unless we we invest in uh, the studies like he has uh, rightly mentioned that how strong is that uh, assam type housing is so similarly uh, we have to uh, come and uh, sanction some The studies uh, of local vernacular <laughs> housing uh, prevailing in Mizoram, so that uh, they can experiment in their labs and uh, come out certain solutions for improvement as well. Low cost improvement. He has shown that as well. Yeah, actually, yeah. Regarding that, uh, for constructions of houses, from that uh, our field investigations, we suggest that strong or some type wooden structure will be the best for the uh, for that area. Actually, for the whole of Mizoram, also it may also be better than cement cement structure also. Yeah. So, so just just a general query: uh, How much percentage of housing in the rural areas are Assam type? Are there Assam Actually, type houses? Yeah, uh, most of the houses are Assam type. Actually, it may be around eighty percent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what what are the plans of uh, state government to mitigate the risk, uh, or especially in this uh, event of the Champai events, in light of Champai events, are there some specific uh, plans of state government to mitigate the impact of earthquakes? No, as of now, there is no uh, specific plan. Actually, our uh, our government is uh, trying to get some expert from central government. And then, as per the as per their studies and as per their recommendations, the government may take decisions. Hello. Okay. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much uh, for for this, uh, uh, Doctor Dimpuria, Lal Dimpuria. Uh, what what is the average depth of various geological features in Mizoram? This was one of the questions. Uh, you don't know actually that uh, you need to take a borehole and uh, some site only that Champa district you don't have a data till then. Okay. okay. So are you planning to do that as well? Yeah, I hope if possible you can do. Okay. So 
thank you thank you for for the nice presentation and discussion so, professor thank you. last closing remarks from your side so that uh, we can go and uh, close the event up to date professor kaushik uh -huh. Yes, so uh, it was actually a very uh, nice effort from NIDM to organize such a webinar. The the most important point, if you could remember my presentation, then the three stars is the public awareness and the training. These are some of the most important points. So it is very important actually to have such webinars. And my sincere thanks to Professor Wali uh, also who initiated it, just like you informed. And the pres the the presentations done by. Mr. Dinkuai and uh, Mr. Lalbiya Kuma, of course, shows the insight of the uh, uh, the things that are there in Mizoram. Because from outside we can only talk, but these are the people who actually know what is there in the inside. And I am actually really glad to know that in villages of uh, Mizoram, there are majority of the buildings are Assam type housing. But I am also interested to know what are the differences in these buildings from the Assam type real houses that are there in Assam. I am sure there will be some changes. There will be some differences. So those are the things that we need to study. And uh, so thank you, uh, thank you again for inviting me on this interesting, this interesting webinar. And uh, Professor Kaushik and uh, the other two panelists, uh, there, there is a lot of demand uh, from Aizol Municipal Corporation to organize some some uh, engineers' capacity building programs. So uh, we may be taking up uh, some more initiative from an idea side. Like the, your first point to build the capacity and to raise at least the awareness level among the engineers. So yes. we are we are uh, taking up uh, coming up uh, with some more uh, similar activities uh, targeting uh, Mizoram, but uh, with a focus of the Northeast India, uh, because uh, the entire region requires a lot of lot of uh, capacity building initiatives. Uh, uh, we have been uh, coming to that region, but uh, due to this uh, Corona times, we, we have not uh, uh, come for quite some time. Um, maybe the last time uh, last year, I, I visited uh, once or twice, twice uh, to organize these programs. But that is the limitation. That uh, and and you see that uh, it takes a lot of effort to organize a program sitting in Delhi and uh, coordinating uh, with people like you and uh, people in um, Aizol and uh, uh, in Shiloh. So uh, definitely, but thank you so much for sparing uh, valuable time to all three four speakers, with which are able to uh, justify their presence. And as you rightly mentioned, Professor Devesh Valia is uh, definitely one of the active participants of NIDM team. Now I hope uh, we will take a lot of uh, uh, help from you as well in organizing various activities, and uh, we will uh, team up with you as well. So thank you so much uh, for for uh, joining uh, our webinar. And uh, we will definitely going to trouble you again on some some important issues. We uh, can discuss with you just, uh, how how to go ahead uh, uh, from here. And uh, thank you, Dr. Lalinpia, for a nice presentation. As uh, Professor Kaushik has mentioned, that uh, you had shown us some glimpses of what had taken place in uh, Mizoram in the Champai district. And uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Vyakt, uh, for uh, for making that uh, presentation, that government effort, and your report. I tried to locate here in uh, the central government that report, but I could not. But definitely, I will request you to share that report as well if you can. And uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lalin Puya, you also uh, can share your report and presentation so that uh, we can uh, make it wide publicity of the efforts made by your team and uh, the state government. Definitely, a lot of effort has gone by the state government in uh, uh, facilitating all all these efforts. And uh, as Professor Kaushik mentioned, that this is the first interaction, at least uh, from an IDM side, to go and uh, look into those uh, that small window of uh, Mizoram and uh, uh, finding some solutions. So we will keep on doing our bit of efforts in trying to mitigate the impact of impending earthquakes, not only in Mizoram but the entire region. And uh, thank you so much uh, to the entire uh, panel of experts, especially Professor Kaushik, uh, Pro Professor Devish Walia. Who is uh, the organizing partner as well, uh, Lalit Priya and uh, Dr. Biya. So thank you so much once again for uh, sparing the time and uh, a valuable presentation and comments. So uh, we, we are uh, definitely uh, organizing few more activities and webinars, uh, and maybe a training program uh, slightly later on um, in, in coming times. 
so uh, thank you so much uh, for for sparing the time and uh, making nice presentations so with this uh, let's close uh, this uh, today's webinar uh, i hope uh, everyone has enjoyed all the participants uh, thank you so much for sustaining uh, the good interest in the webinar uh, i i also take this opportunity to thank our executive director for uh, uh, allowing us to organize this event uh, executive director uh, major general dutton saab is uh, always very kind and uh, he is always uh, helpful in uh, promoting all such activities so this is one of the need of the time in my opinion so so we, we are able to deliver this event uh, my team at nidm especially uh, yogita uh, from back of the screen she is managing the entire show so uh, thank you so much yogita and uh, thank you to editor uh, for uh, allowing us to organize this uh, event thank you to all participants uh, panelists once again and uh, thank you thank you uh, to all for for uh, nice uh, presentations and discussion so thank you once again and uh, let's close uh, the event thank you